I started playing this softy dicky song and he said, wow, it sounds like you got a whole history there. Yeah. But uh, we can chop this song up to uh, many songs and we chopped it up for like 24 songs over a couple of months. And then the day we were finished, the whole band quit. All of them had got a terrible headache because they were metal musicians. They couldn't remember so many chords and all the shit. So they quit us and left us and me and Arne was alone there. And I asked Arne, what are we going to do? And he said, we're going to record the album. We're going to put it out. And I said, we don't have a producer. And he said, I know this Italian guy who come to Bergen. He's a black metal backpacker from Italy. And he was a producer. And we said, okay, let's get this guy to Arna. And we, we met him and we said, okay, we're going to pay you 50 kroner a day. And that's what it actually takes to get on the train to Arna and go back in the night. But he said, I want a job. No problem. I come to you. I produce 100% black metal. And we started recording two songs. And we went into the studio and listened. Put to the playback. And he said, hi guys, how do you want this to sound? Like Dark Throne, Immortal. I can produce anything like black metal sound. 100% old school. And we said, fuck you. You're wrong. And we kicked him out. Because we didn't want to have that uh, kind of uh, old school sound. We wanted to do something new. And... Uh, so we recorded, finished the album, and, and uh, uh, we thought, what are we going to do now? We have a, to a full album called, but, but uh, this was before Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Any of you heard of Facebook? Yeah. This way, yes, one guy in the back. Kill, kill him. <laughs> but uh, it was very popular with web design. So me and Arna said, maybe we should make a web page. And we made a web page and we wrote on the web page just this Svartidika, the world's first black metal musical. And I went back to work on the factory. And one day the fucking boss comes and says, All right, it's a fucking phone for you in the office. Don't tell people to call the factory, okay? So I went in and took up the phone. And it was a journalist saying, Hello, is you, are you Aurel Brockstar? Yes. Yeah, I wrote on the web, worldwide web, that you have created the world's first black metal musical. And I said, Fuck, this World Wide Web is really crazy. And I and, uh, said, you want to interview you? And we went to interview you with this uh, woman. And we actually got our first... Uh, can you hold this for me? Wow. We just keep it there. This is the first page ever, and it's me and Arna. And it said, the world's first black metal musical. And we look not like black metal people. You actually do, but not this one. We look like two, two uh, friends who had lost our third friend in the water, actually. And it's like, please find him, help us. But thank you very much. Round of applause for him. But uh, the thing is, it says black metal, but it also says mu musical. And that's a totally different story. Because I was just lying to the journalist. I said, we have a full musical, you know. But we didn't have all, did we? No, no. So, I actually had to go home and write a fucking musical, you know. And the whole musical is actually just one page. And if you can see, you know, it's a lot of writing here. But it's actually also, look, can you hold this, Anna? Or some other black man, not just the... Anna, you can take it, Anna. Keep up here, come up here. Give a round of applause for Anna, the drummer of South Korea. Very nice guy. And you see, it actually looked like three mountains, you can see. It's like, I mean, it's just me thinking. Very exciting, very dark story. Very exciting, dark, and very exciting, and then finish. You can go wrong. <laughs> so, but after three months, I had a story. And now, and now comes, uh, I said to Arne, well, how, how are we going to put this musical on the theater? And he said, let's make a film. Yeah, but the theater film, people don't want a fucking film. Yeah, but anyway, we do it. So we contacted this guy who was a big shot in Bergen. He had his own film company. And he wanted to meet us at a very fine restaurant. And we, we, we went to the restaurant and we sat down with him. And in, the, in advance, I had made some... Uh, I know I have a friend who played in Gorgoth. Have you ever heard of Gorgoth? Yes. yes. It's a dance band from Bergen. <laughs> Play a lot of dance music. And... Uh, 
we're gonna meet this big film shot, you know? So we need some drawings from the character in this Vartidiki piece. You're actually smiling now. It's so beautiful to see people so dark. Like, Who is this guy with the blonde hair and the curls? I love him. No, no, but uh, we went to the film guy and I say, okay, I'm gonna show you something, you Mr. Film Guy. We made some character. And this was the character. It's a little dead children in the water with a dick. <laughs> and the drummer in Gogo, they actually draw this because as everybody and that one, nobody took us fucking serious. It was like, you're gonna fucking make a black hat music and get the fuck out of my face. So it's like, I showed these drawings and every drawing he made was like, just like this. Dead children with an ice cream or something on the head. <laughs> because he, he couldn't draw, like, he was really a grim uh, drawing. Uh, he played a band called Molested. Everybody heard of it? No. And he also made a dead children with a dick. And I showed it to the film guy, and he was like really stupid. He was like, okay, I like it. But, uh, and then he said, this is really interesting. Because he said to, to me and Anna, okay. Uh, the, he was a uh, 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 from the East Block in Norway, and, and he was like, <laughs> "Okay, uh, these kids, Renori, when they out of the water, how do they move?" And I was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> I haven't thought about it. And then Arne did something brilliant in black metal history. He just raised up from the table, and he had this pose, you know, with a long black hair, and he was like, "They fly! They fly!" And the producer was, yes, fuck man, they fly. And I was like, shit, wow. And it was like kind of Ulve or Abbott thing. <laughs> they fly, that's a righty man. And it was like everything was like, shit. And the funny thing, the, the film uh, the, had to show this drawing. Because the drawer, he actually drew this. And he was playing gold rod. Can anybody raise their hand and think, who is this? Who's this guy? Yes. Uh, huh? It's Esteban, Joel Aspedal. He's actually sitting on Finca. It's just two corners away from here. But the, okay, let's see. I'm just talking away now. But the thing is, we went to the theater. Now it becomes really exciting. I need more beer. Okay, let's have a cheer. Cheers. We went to the theater in Belgium and they wanted to put up the piece. It was just incredible. And the film was like, wow. But the thing was, the boss said to me, if it's gonna be a black metal musical, we actually need a black metal man in the, in the play. And I was like, fuck. And he said, do you know anybody of it? And I was saying, yeah, I know uh, Orion, host in Torka. You heard of him? And I know uh, a guy, and I don't know him, but it's Christian Aspinal Gold. I don't know if you heard of him. And I went to talk with Orion in Torka. And he was very, he's a really kind guy. He was like, uh, I don't, he was also like, I don't have a time, man, sorry to disappoint you, Arie. I don't have a time. <laughs> and he went, and I bought the beer and he went away. But then I think, okay, maybe I should get the number from Christian Aspedal Gold. And I got the number from Arlen who wrote the shit, I brought, uh, his drawings, and I called Christian. And that's a very special phone. And he said, uh, you can come to, like, how is he? He's like, he's like, yeah. Uh, Yo, you can come to the house in hospital if you want to and live one night. And if you survive, I will give you an answer in the morning. <laughs> and I went to hospital. This is fucking true. I went alone to hospital. It's long fucking up in the mountain with a bus. And I went walking and I found a little house where he lived in. And I thought maybe because I heard this guy is the most dangerous gay man in the world. So it was like expecting maybe I had to sleep in the snow or something. But he invited me in. And he just stepped in his coach, looking at me, and he said, eh, you can sleep upstairs, and in the morning I will give you an answer. <laughs> and I went up, and it was a little uh, co a little bed with a dead child in it. No, no. <laughs> I was just trying to get some sleep. But actually, this is true. There was rats crawling inside the walls. And I could actually hear them talking. You think God will decide tomorrow? <laughs> And in the middle of the night, actually woke, my girl was standing over the bed. And I just thought in the morning, it was like, whoa, have I been to the castle of Dracula or something? <laughs> but the next day, I went into this uh, living room and I said, okay, girl, are you going to go into being music?
don't do that fucking YouTube shit with me. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, yes, I will be in the musical. And I just ran out the door, you know, down the valley. And it was like the deliverance music, like ding, 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 ding. And I was to go my throat, so I just, okay. No, no. But okay. But now comes the, the even more exciting part, because we got, uh, our, uh, Gold decided to be in the musical, and we decided to have a press conference. And this is really a historical thing, because uh, when in the press conference, one journalist in Bergen, he, in the 90s, he was probably the guy who created the whole black battle genre, because he, his name is Finn Bjorn Thunder. And he was the guy who had the art, and he was the kind of guy thinking, well, black metal has to do something with Satanism. And he tried to call this guy called Varg Vikanes over and say, you want to make an interview with you? But Varg, uh, Varg was uh, not interested, but finally at the end he did an interview. Maybe you've seen him with a long black hair and a big knife, like Isis and now. And, <laughs> and, and this same guy, Finn Bjorn Tundra, he showed up at the press conference with Svartidika. And he just waited to every journalist that asked Christian whatever they wanted. And then he looked at Christian and said, What do you think about church burnings? And Christian was like, I support them 100%. <laughs> 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 and then suddenly we got the whole portfolio with newspaper. And even me and Arno was, Oh fuck! We're all over! And it's the funny thing this stupid, uh, this stupid uh, Fabian Tundra. He called me eventually and wanted me to give some kind of answer on this, uh, what we were doing, and said, uh, I thought I'm going to top it all. And I said to him, can you hold this on? And he asked me, uh, okay, or well, there's been a lot of debate, and uh, what to do now with Svartelik? And I said, invite Grevan. Yeah. And it was like everybody, poof. But of course, the, the boss, uh, on the, he said, no way we're going to have Grevan on the show. But this was like, it was totally crazy. And how much time I got left? Three days? No. Okay. I'm soon going to feel. But the thing is, the put up the show, it was a big success. 64 nights, 10,000 young men saw it. And women. But, but the thing was, when it was finished, with me and Arne was kind of uh, left to dry, you know. We just uh, went uh, each way and... and because it was like a monster. It was like we created a, a kind of uh, everybody. If you go around in Bergen today and ask uh, maybe a guy in the 25 years or something, what is your, uh, uh, do you like black metal? Yes, and I saw Svartidika. And that's incredible because these kids, they don't uh, relate to something that happened in the 1990s, one or two or three. They actually said that Svartidika is black metal. And for us it was like, fuck! And, but we, we were kind of, ah. We don't want to explore the show or take any success part of it. We just went each to us. And then half a year ago, it was funny because a woman called me and said, are you the founder of Svartidika? Yeah. And she said, I'm a science woman and I'm working on some project. We're going to have some fish on Mars and we want to have black metal. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? But she actually wanted to work with, with Svartidika and make a black metal opera <laughs> and have something to do with Mars. And I was like, wow! And, and that was my, uh, it, that's, this is how I work because for me, black metal was not interesting in itself, but if you have an ID that's gonna have different genres like musical, black metal, and it can go from an opera who was really the black metal of the 800th century with Richard Wagner and Nietzsche. Those guys were crazy, you know. Greven, they wouldn't even talk to him. They were like, ah, crazy people. And I thought, wow, opera, let's make black metal opera. And I don't know if Karen is here now, are you here? No, she's not here. But, uh, but me and Arna are now actually planning to make the world's first black metal opera. And it's going to be maybe some parts of the story of Svartidika. So, so it's really exciting. And I think everybody who lives in Bergen and in into black metal has a, a kind of responsibility to try to think a bit original. Because it's like 30 years now from, from, from this Finn Bjorn Thunder who actually created black metal. Not Greven. It was Finn Bjorn Thunder. Because Greven, he was into Odin, Thor and everything. And of course he killed the guy. 
But the shanga that this once we get fire on the media, it was like also wow. And for me, that's like wow. Black metal is just media. But and if you want to stick your head out of this media shit, you actually have to think a bit original. So I hope uh, if somebody's into black metal, metal, I hope also you will try to make something original and try to make uh, try to just have fun. And and the funny thing is, every every guy in black metal I meet, like Urion, Gol. And, and I think I've talked to Ulbe once, guys. they're actually very great guys, very good humor, and they fucking love to laugh. And I'm the same guy. So let's have a cheer. And thank you for me. Okay. And I hope you enjoy the... Uh, no. Cheers to you, And if everybody wants to look in the portfolio and see if it's true, just... Uh, Talk later to you. Okay. Say hello to England for the last time. Once more, thank you to Ogil. So in a moment, Alfred will be uh, performing here at this record store. I think uh, I think it might be safe to say that tonight will be the most extreme event at this uh, record store and bar. And uh, after Auslit, we have Monday Death Cult, and of course, Blood Red John will finish the evening. And uh, we hope you all have a good time, and uh, drink some beers, and buy some merch, and uh, thank you for coming.